Hi folks, it's Peter back with another video. This one's going to be a bit different from my usual vinyl updates. Uh, yesterday I was watching the latest VC video by James Griffiths and it was a response to one done by Brian of uh, Black Beans and Rice fame and it was to show 10 albums by artists that you've actually seen live. I thought that was a really neat idea and I thought I'd love to try it myself so here it goes. So let's go right back to the start. The very first band I ever saw, Irish folk legends Planksty. This is their first album. They were formed in 1972 so it must have been 73 that I saw them, possibly early 74 but I think it was 73. And it was in a small folk club in Egremont, a uh, town here in West Cumbria, just three miles from where I live. I uh, didn't really realise I was seeing legends at the time. <laughs> My next choice is the great Frank Zappa. This is the Shakey Booty album. And it was on this tour that I saw him for the only time. Uh, and I've had to make notes of my dates because I can never remember them. I am 61 actually, so I, so I make excuse that. Um, it was on 13th of February 1979 at Newcastle City Hall when I was at university there. And I've got the actual programme, which is just one big poster really. Let's see if I can get to it. you can see it. This one's going to be difficult. And that's the poster. <laughs> um, I've never been a massive fan of the Shake Your Booty album to be fair but on the night he was superb. He conducted that band superbly with his small hand signals etc and I don't think there was a gap between any of the songs the whole concert until the encore absolutely incredible uh, third um, a favorite of mine soft the soft machine and this is their alive and well in Paris live album that was recorded in 1977 now, apart from Soft Machine Legacy, who I, I've seen two or three times before they dropped the Legacy part and reverted back to being Soft Machine, the only time I actually saw Soft Machine was at the Newcastle Playhouse, uh, and it was 29th of October 1976. Um, it was part of the Newcastle Jazz Festival and the BBC recorded it for BBC Three Radio and for BBC Two Television and showed it I think the following week though it's only 23 odd minutes. Um, it's never been released I don't know why seeing as there's lots of other stuff by Soft Machine has but I do have a download of the concert At the time, the band was Carl Jenkins on keyboards, John Etheridge on guitar, Rick Sanders on violin, who went on to play with Fairport Convention, Percy Jones up, uh, on bass of Brand X fame, and obviously the great John Marshall on drums. Excellent concert. I wish they'd get their fingers out and release it properly. <laughs> right. Number four, and we're sticking in Newcastle, where I saw a lot of concerts when I was at university there. And this is a guy who's touring at the moment with this sort of material, Steve Hillage. This is his live Herald album. Um, and it was the 29th of October, 1977, that I saw him. And when you went in, you got a free single. 
This was Ley Lines to Glaston. It's a track that does not appear on the Motivation Radio album. And on the B-side was a track by the support act, Glenn Phillips, from his album at the time. So this was 1977, and I've got the program. And that was the band at the time, which featured obviously Miket Girardi on keyboards, synthesizer and voice. Uh, but also there was uh, Joe Blocker on drums, bass player Curtis Robertson, and on guitar and keyboards, Chuck Bynum, who had actually just come off playing with Marvin Gaye. So it was an excellent concert. I've seen him more recently when he was, uh, he rejoined with Gong and played a support set on his own first. Superb. Next up is a band I can't show any an album by or CD because he never did one. But they did do two singles, well, one EP and one single, and that's the band Traitor's Gate. They were a folk rock band, electric folk band. I saw them when I was living in London for six months. Uh, and I saw them at Walthamstow Library, upstairs in a small room. And it's probably the, the gig where there was the least people that I've ever attended. There must have only been about half a dozen of us there to watch them, but they were excellent. This would have been, I think, 81. This, the first thing, EP came out in 79. The second the single came out in 81, so it must have probably been it back end of 81 when I saw them. Really good. Shame they never got round to doing more than these two tracks and I don't know what's ever happened to the people since. All right, moving on. Ah, this next can cover two gigs. No, unfortunately, I never did get to see the birds. This is the birds on Tidal, which is half live, half studio. Uh, but it do, I did manage to see um, Roger McGuinn at the International 2 in Manchester uh, when I was living there. And that was the 9th of October 1986. It was just a solo concert, him just on, on guitar. Really good. But I also saw the drummer from this version of the uh, Birds, Gene Parsons. And that was upstairs in a very small pub in Manchester. It must have been right at the back end of the 90s or, or the very start of 2000. And it was in a pub called the Britain's Protection, where we used to hold our um, Northern Deadheads meetings and put on Deadhead cover bands. But he was in this small room that we used to use wouldn't have expected somebody well i see of his stature obviously he's not that famous but he was from the birds would have expected him to play in a bigger place but he put on a really good performance he's got he had a really good uh album called kindling i think that was his first so, uh first solo album that was highly regarded but excellent gig as well Right, carrying on. Next up, uh, we have one of my favourite musicians of all time. Absolutely. Klaus Schulze. This is his live double album, his first live album, I think. And I managed to see him for the very first time at the... AD Festival in Derby on the 27th of April 1996. Before that I'd been going to quite a few um, electronic music festivals, the, the Amber Festivals, uh, but this was run by AD Music. That's 
the program from the concert. I think we, who else was on at the time? There was Chris Harvey, Becky Williams, Maslin Jones and Guy Evans. Guy Evans, the, the drummer from um, Mandegraft Generator and Code Indigo. And then there was Klaus. Excellent stuff. And that, uh, that gig was actually recorded and released as the CD Are You Sequenced? I don't think this was ever put out on vinyl. Uh, the bonus track on here is, was 77 minutes. But that, that came from a 1993 recording session, an earlier time. I was really stoked to be able to see Klaus Schulze play live. Brilliant. Lady linked to him is Ashra Temple and Manuel Gerching. Now this is their recent live album from 2017 of Ashra Temple Experience, which is Manuel plus Ariel Pink, Oren Ambarchi and Shags Chamberlain. Now I saw them play at the Barbican in London on the 27th of March, 22nd of March 2017. The first half of the concert was um, Manuel Solo playing the whole of the E2 E4 album. Uh, it's absolutely superb. But as good as that was, when they the band came on and they played material from Ashra Temple, Schwingungen and Seven Up. Oh, incredible stuff. Absolutely incredible. I had actually seen what was billed as Ashra Temple earlier. Um, in at the Royal Festival Hall on the 2nd of April 2000. But that was actually just Gerching and Schulze playing together, billed as Ashra Temple, because obviously they were both in the first lineup. Um, excellent stuff, but I must admit I was a bit disappointed that it wasn't a full band at the time. But again, that was released later on as the album Gin Rose. Nice stuff. Right. Last number nine on the getting towards the end. And this is the album Music for Eighteen Musicians by Steve Reich. This is uh, on ECM from nineteen seventy eight. Now I might be cheating, but I didn't actually see Steve Reich perform. What I did see is the London Sympho Sinfonietta uh, performing the music of Steve Reich. And that was at the Manchester Bridgewater Hall on the 4th of March, 1998. Um, though Steve Reich was there and he did a talk before the concert, um, and afterwards, he was uh, knocking around and selling merchandise. And I picked up this 10 CD box set and got him to sign it. Excellent. I love this set. It's superb. But also, I... As a memento of that uh, gig, I actually surreptitiously, naughtily, take the, the gig. And this is my recording. There you go. And they played Music for Pieces of Wood from 1973, Music for Mallet Instruments, Voices and Organ from 1973. And the, se the second half of the concert was the incredible music for 18 musicians. 
take the 1976 piece. That was well worth seeing. Excellent. And finally, well, one of the biggies for me, I'm a massive fan of the Grateful Dead, big Deadhead fan. Like I say, we used to have whole loads of uh, meetings and gigs of Northern Deadheads in Manchester. But this is their album Dead Set, which is I think recorded in 1980, released in 1981. Sorry for the glare. And it was in 1981 that I actually saw them for the first and only time. This is the programme from the gig. Not much to read, but plenty of photos. They came over and put to Europe and in March of 81 and they did four nights at the iconic venue, the Rainbow Theatre in London. I was uh, living in London at that point, so it would have been about the time I saw uh, Traitor's Gate. Um, oh yeah, so that must... Traders Cape must have been 81 then, yeah. Um, I didn't know enough, even though I loved their music, I didn't know enough about the band at the time to realise that I should have gone to all four gigs because they changed the, the set list every night. Um, so I only went to the one night, unfortunately. Um, they came back later in the year in, in the uh, autumn of I think October, and did another four nights at the Rainbow. Um, and given all the uh, live concerts that have been re and box sets that have been released by the Dead, it's about time they released those Rainbow concerts. That would be great. Um, but not only, like I said, that was the only time I actually saw the Dead. But then in in 2001, my friend Bob and myself went to America uh, to see Phil Lesh and friends doing their New Year's Eve gigs. New Year's Eve was always a big thing for the dead, the concerts. So we really wanted to go. It wasn't a good time to travel to the States. It was just after 9-11. But... Um, we went for four days. First two nights we took in a string cheese incident in San Francisco. And the next two nights we saw Phil Lesh and friends at uh, the Oakland Coliseum. Uh, on both nights, the on the first night the support act was just Rat Dog, Bob Weir's band. On the second night, it started off with the Tedeschi Trucks Band, Derek Trucks, then Rat Dog, then Phil Lesh and Friends. But then come um, midnight in the new year, out onto stage sauntered uh, Bill Kreutzmann and Mickey Hart, which blew my mind at the time to see them. So you had four of the members of the Grateful Dead playing under the name Crusader Rabbit. Uh, and they played for another two hours, three hours, I think. It was about four in the morning before we got out of there. Super, one of the highlights of my music watching career, if you like. Superb, that was. Um, but that is in the end. I have then went, Rat Dog came over, Bob Weir's band came over in 2002 to play five gigs. And me and my friends thought, we'll do the, the deadhead thing and follow the band around the country. Um, they started off in Newcastle, 
then played the Fife Ice Arena in Kirkcaldy. Now, how they go decided to go there, I'll never know. This ice arena held 9,000 people or so, and there was about three, two, three, four hundred of us all clustered around the the uh, stage, but it was brilliant. And even better, before the gig, we decided to go to the local hotel for a drink in the bar there. And who should saunter in but Ratov, the band, including Bob himself. Uh, I think he was a bit taken aback and didn't know what to expect, but us Brits being quite reserved, nobody made a fuss of him or anything. One or two asked for uh, autographs, but I don't think it would have been anything like it would have been in the States where he couldn't have done that, I don't think. Uh, we then missed, actually, the next gig in Cardiff. We saw him in Bilston, which is Wolverhampton in the Midlands, and finished off in the London Astoria. And then the following year, in 2003, in the August, they came back and did another five gigs. Uh, started off this time at the Astoria, then played Bilston again. They played the Canterbury Festival, the outdoor festival, which was brilliant. I remember that so well. It was a gorgeous day. Then Milton Keynes. And they finished off in what was my hometown at the time, the Life, the Life Cafe in Manchester. Now, I said, we held these meetings for deadhead, northern, the Northern Deadheads. So we decided, as the Life Cafe, the main venue was floor level but they had a smaller venue in the basement we would book the on the day of the gig we booked the basement uh, for a party and we put on a Grateful Dead cover band uh, the Working Men's Deed from Scotland and anybody who had a ticket could come into the uh, to the main gig could come into ours and it was superb uh, and one of our young ladies baked a cake, a special type of cake, if you know what I mean. And two or three of the band came down as well to check us out <laughs> and, and watch the our cover band play. Uh, it was a, a great, a great night, um, and the concert was superb. Um, another night not to forget. Well, that's my 10. Um, I hope you found that of interest. Like I said, the hard part was cutting it down just to 10. Uh, but great memories. Okay, thank you very much. See you soon.